Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so as you've just heard from Jamie, this is how we're, we're performing those toxicity experiments. But here is how we come up with what we want to actually look at. Now, in terms of looking at the lunar regolith and the space weather regolith, I'm very sorry. That's not what this talk is about. <laughs> um, but it is about magmatic degassing. And so where we're going to look is areas of past fire fountaining on the moon. So in the picture here, we have a trench dug in Shorty Crater uh, during the Apollo 17 mission. And there's this lovely rust orange colored stuff all over the place. That rust colored stuff is, lunar, um, is magmatic gla uh, glass beads that have been spit up in a fire fountaining process. Um, these glass beads are often co coated in volatile components. So this is a gas that propelled those, those uh, liquid particles up, then condensed phases on the surface of those cooled glass beads. And the big problem here is we don't really understand what that means and what those products are on the lunar surface, because this is going to be very different from terrestrial degassing. So what we want to look at is the orange glass beads here, um, sample 74220, right from the middle of that trench. Um, it has orange and black. Orange and black glass beads are compositionally fairly similar. The difference is that black glass beads have devitrified ilmenite in them. And we just picked this one here on the bottom, 7422168 Hughes 90 as our representative composition. So on the surface of these glass beads, there has been noted elevation in a whole lot of things. In particular, we're looking at heavy metals. Uh, so up there, there's mercury and arsenic, which are a little too dangerous for us to work with. We don't have the quite the right setup for that. Um, but lead, um, lead, potassium, rhenium, selenium, selenium, there's a whole list. It's gigantic, and it's probably bigger than that. Uh, furthermore, these glass beads get reworked by meteorite impacts, and so you don't just have these nice, perfect circular glass beads. You have all this cracked material, and some of that volatile coating gets chipped off in this process. And so some of the small pieces and some of the volatiles that have chipped off are going to be in the respirable, res, respirable fraction of the lunar dust, which means astronauts can breathe it in if they are exposed to it. So this is what some of those coatings look like. This is from a Leo and Ma paper. And they're particularly looking at sodium phases, sodium and potassium phases. This image is showing sodium. And so you see there's a lot of nice stuff on the surface. Um, these deposits can be rich in heavy metals. This paper also notes a zinc deposit. Um, this, partic this particular image is looking more at sodium chlorides. So what we want to know are what mineral phases are being deposited on the surface of those glass beads and how do those pose a potentially toxic threat. And as much as I would love to work with Apollo sample directly, there's not a lot of it. It's hard to get your hands on. Some of our techniques are going to be destructive. And those samples have been weathered from the capsule environment and from the Earth environment when they were brought down to Houston. So we're going to experimentally simulate lunar magmas and gases. That's our goal. So we want to experimentally determine what these mineral phases are, and then we will pass those on to Jamie, and he will conduct those um, toxicity experiments to see how lung tissue reacts. So for our experiments, we used that glass composition, which we've then doped in a number of elements. So we're looking at copper, gallium, germanium, lead, zinc, 
sodium uh, and chlorine and sulfur and phosphorus as our volatiles. Um, and over on the right side, that's your right side. <laughs> um, that's what our composition looks like. In red is the doped composition. That's why it's going to look a little bit off from what we used earlier. Then we stick this in an evacuated silica glass tube and heat it at 1300 degrees, or our furnace is actually at 1275, and let that degas. And the gas then sublimates particles on the walls of the glass tube. And we take that, crack it open, and look at it in an SEM. And this is what we find. So here we've got some magnetite. It has elevated levels of germanium and gallium in it. Um, and at slightly lower temperatures, that magnetite is being co-deposited with chlorides. And the chlor chlorine in the gas is eroding the magnetite. So if it looks fuzzy, that's not because the SEM is out of focus. It's because it's being eroded. We also see a number of chlorides. Here in particular, we're looking at zinc and lead chlorides. There's also lots of iron chloride around. Um, and all of these phases have been noted as vapor deposited on the moon and on lunar glass, uh, on those orange glass beads. We also find some much more complex looking coatings. Um, here we have something that is got a lot of iron chloride in it on the left and those white dots in the picture are actually gallium metal, which is very interesting. Um, over on the right, we have zinc and iron chlorides. Three minutes. Thank you. Um, with some sulfur, we don't have a good idea of what that sulfur phase looks like right now, but we do plan on correcting that. And of course, in the one instance where we do have a really good idea, we found pyrite and it's got some iron chloride coated on the surface. You can actually see looks like flakes on the surface there. So this is the condensed version of what we found and what's on there. So we're particularly interested in those heavy metals. So we're looking at the zinc chlorides, the lead chloride, um, even the potassium chloride can be toxic, iron chloride, and anything that's in our deposited phases. Now we've also found OPX and silica, and these may be biased because we're doing it in a silica tube. We may be remobilizing some of that silica, um, and the OPX may be reaction with that glass. We're not sure, but we're putting it on here anyways, because in a lunar environment, those gases are interacting with silicates that are on the moon in the regolith. So the future work, of course, we need to make one that has a higher, uh, make a mix that has a higher sulfur chlorine ratio so we can actually get a good idea of what sulfur is doing and how, what it's carrying in the gas phase. Then we're going to take these mineral sublimates and we're going to reduce them in a hydrogen furnace to simulate space weathering. And we're going to give both the weathered and non-weathered simulants to the health science lab to see how those affect uh, lung tissue. Um, and with that, I will take questions. <laughs>